thank you for letting me come here and try try to explain what we are doing at the Swedish National Heritage Board. Um, I, I said I work as a development manager. Uh, actually, I'm originally an archaeologist. I've been working for 10 years in excavations. After that, I had a kid uh, who is now 14 and uh, started it's you always have to get up very early in the morning uh, go somewhere and and work so i had to get up at four in the morning uh, and my kid was asleep and then i had i came back at at seven in the evening and he was asleep so it wasn't very funny so i started working in museum instead so i've been working at the uh, swedish national heritage uh, what's the name of this again the historical museum i think they are calling themselves now uh, for six years and uh, then i worked as a uh, some kind of media designer for the uh, the medieval museum of Stockholm for the new exhibition, uh, and then they needed somebody who had uh, ideas about what you can do uh, with with the digital future. Uh, so I I started here four years ago now. Uh, this is actually a, uh, an old presentation. It's three years old. And uh, I, I actually I, I picked it out because this is one of few presentations in English. And uh, I was happy to see that everything that was to be in th three or four years ago actually I could, could just change. So this is the current architecture, not the in development. Um, first, something about where I work then. The Swedish National Heritage Board is a government agency. Just like Riksutställningar. What's the name in English? Traveling exhibitions. Traveling exhibitions. No, 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 no sorry. <laughs> oh. It's a Swedish exhibition in Sorry. Right. Oh. oh. I'm just consulting. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are we are taking care of what is called uh, a mobile heritage and heritage environment. It's uh, it's not a very good explanation. Everything that is old and you can see in the landscape is what we do, old buildings, monuments, uh, heritage sites like Stone Age uh, sites and uh, everything else. And everything that, uh, which is a place from uh, where items that end up in the museum comes from. Uh, so we're actually not the museum. A lot of people think that we are, but we are trying to promote the, the environment uh, the historical environment as an asset. And we are not coordinating museums, uh, but a lot of people think we are. But we normally function, and have, has a function to coordinate the museums. Uh, I think it's because actually the museums are competitors, because uh, uh, they are measuring how much people are entering uh, through the doors of the museum to see how how good they were this year and uh, so they don't really want to cooperate but they always say that all right we are cooperating this aspect and so on but uh, that means that that as we have a like a neutral uh, position we usually manage the coordination of a lot of stuff in the museums like the digital coordination uh, that i would like, would like to talk a little bit about like six years ago, this uh, uh, project uh, is not a project called Swedish Open Cultural Heritage. Uh, it's uh, it's called Sock in English. It's called some Sök in Swedish. <laughs> it uh, Sock. If somebody says it sucks the data from the museums, and the idea is that there are a lot of uh, items in museum databases that uh, you would like to uh, find at the same place or the same time. Otherwise you have to go to the first museum site to see do they have any Viking Age swords? No they didn't. And then to the next and to the next and to the next. Uh, this is a way to uh, find one place instead of Google to, to just find them. And, uh, and also to uh, actually to ask questions to the, to the data. Um, we are providing uh, an open API with uh, museum information from uh, about 40 institutions and 
20 local historical societies, Hembygdsföreningar. There are uh, more than 5 million objects, and uh, these <coughs> objects are of, of different kinds. Uh, most of it uh, is uh, museum objects, like uh, things that you can find in an exhibition, uh, <coughs> normally with a photo, but not always. And uh, some of the uh, objects that we have in our databases, like heritage sites, uh, old buildings, old monuments. And uh, everything is presented in a, a repository uh, that is accessible through uh, an open API. And, and uh, at the moment, there are 10 applications uh, that are making use of this data. Uh, for example, you can go out in the forest with your iPhone and find all heritage sites. And you can also find uh, everything that was found on those sites that are now in the museum that is connected to so, we have no, uh, uh, no clean idea about what we would like to do with this information. I think we have the, the philosophical idea that our information belongs to everybody and it should be free. And it should be freely accessible and uh, easy to use. And uh, we, are, we are trying to get out with information so that, with this information so that other people can make, uh, make use of it the data uh, in some way. Uh, this is sometimes a bit hard to explain to, uh, to our management or, or the direction that, well, we don't know really what we can use this information for. We are also an aggregator for Europeana. Europeana is, is Europeana familiar to you? Mm. So it's a, an aggregator of uh, cultural heritage objects uh, and art objects in Europe. They have uh, uh, data from museums and uh, uh, art uh, uh, exhi exhibit exhibitions and so on uh, from whole Europe. And uh, we are the national aggregator. So it's, uh, everything that ends up in our repository also uh, uh, comes to Europeana. Well, this is one of the slides that I didn't change. Uh, this is not really the current development. This is the development that we were doing three years ago. Um, we added semantics to the data. Uh, we put in, this may be a bit uh, strange words if you're not familiar with how you can mark or, uh, or, or, or explain uh, information like, uh, it's it's, I think it's easier if I just jump forward. <laughs> so this is, because there's a slide later on that explains this parts better. This is the current architecture we have. Uh, we have the museums, and we have the heritage databases, and the buildings database. That's another database that we are uh, taking care of. And uh, everything is like going into this huge box called SOC. And uh, it should be clear that this is only there are only objects there. It's like administration, uh, administrational information from the museums. Uh, it can be the weight of an object, uh, an image of an object, uh, where it was found, uh, conservation of state, uh, if it's uh, borrowed to another institution, uh, or something else. But it <coughs> we noticed that, that when we had all these objects together in one single database, there were a lot of other kinds of information that became very interesting. Uh, one of these are how are these objects interconnected? So if you have, uh, for example, uh, I think I do like this first. If you have an agent that is a person or an organization uh, that may have owned a physical thing. Physical things are what we have in the museum databases normally. Uh, everything else is normally uh, considered metadata in, in uh, our databases. So we have an agent, let's say Gustav uh, II in Sweden, and he owned a horse, which is a physical thing that is in the uh, Livuskammaren. And they are all related to war and to kings 
and to different things. They were present at uh, the Battle of Lützen, where this king died, and that <coughs> occurred at a time in a place that is Lützen, somewhere in southern Germany or eastern Germany. And uh, this agent, he was born at some certain time and so on. This is the actual, uh, actual <coughs> information that is really inf in interesting about these objects. But when you have these in a museum database, this is what the, uh, the, uh, the museum employees are supposed to know about it. It's inside the head and what the museum guides are supposed to tell about the objects. But it's very hard for someone coming into these objects from the internet to just do something with it. So, so we are trying to add this structure now and we are doing this with the help of what is called uh, user generated content hub uh, which is actually providing a link and these links are also, also marked with a, uh, uh, what kind of relation these objects has to each other. So if we, we put up an object that is a person and we have another object that is a sword for example. We uh, we can mark the link between them as this person has owned this sword and for a certain time. Can I ask a question? Yeah. If, could you uh, connect things to a place? So if yeah. you stand in a place you could get, if you were standing at, at the battlefield of Lützen, you could get uh, all the things related to Gustav and Adolf. Yeah. Okay. The thing, the, the idea is that you, the structure, uh, lets you do this, mm -hmm. but somebody has to put in the data first. Yeah, sure. So, so we are doing all these different kind of efforts to, to build up this data structure. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we have hackathons to make uh, possibilities to, uh, to use different scripts to make links, but we are also doing linkathons mm -hmm. where people are going in, what, trying to see what, how are these objects interconnected. We are also <coughs> working a lot with Wikipedia, uh, where Wikipedia that you all know about is like uh, they have a lot of links, but most of it is 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 not uh, stored in a structure that is reusable. So you have to read the text to understand what it's about. But there are they also have these small boxes, and in the boxes you can see they are very well structured. So you can extract information about links between these objects from Wikipedia. So at the moment we are linking these objects in a sock to uh, Wikipedia. Uh, so that we later on can scrape the Wikipedia for different links to see how are these objects interconnected. Uh, so we are doing these kinds of labs on the, on the data to see what happens. The problem is that when we are doing this, uh, we create a lot of new data and we don't really have a place to store this except here. But this also means that when you have an aggregate of information, uh, you will end up with owning a lot of data that is not present uh, in the institution or the institutional level. Uh, so we have to find some way to push it back down to the museums mm -hmm. also, so they have this information. Uh, we also have a pro project called Platzer. And Platzer is a, a website with a database that where, where ordinary people can tell what they are thinking uh, about a place. Like this is the father, uh, my father's house uh, or my grandfather's house where he lived when he was young. Uh, and these are also connected to Wikipedia and to, uh, it's actually connected to SOC via the, uh, the application Kringla. There's an interface to look on the objects in, in uh, SOC. So this is uh, what we can call uh, infrastructure in development. And uh, it's getting more and more clear to us that this is the right way of trying to uh, make use of information in this uh, or, or of cultural heritage information. Back to this one. This is actually a, a, a way of presenting the, uh, the protocol as it's, it looks today. Uh, normally the problem has been that nobody was responsible for the agents. It's very hard to find where the, there was one list of architects at the Architecture Museum and another one of people related to libraries for books at the Swedish National Library and uh, uh, some events at some places. Lewis Cameron had some events, uh, old battles for instance. And, uh, and uh, nobody re 
have the, the full responsibility uh, for a national database. So we are trying to fix this now, to make uh, it possible to connect all these things to, to each other. Uh, everything is presented to the web as through open APIs, but also like open data or semantic web. And this is semantic information in, uh, in action. We have this thing that has met this guy who was present at that event that is related to this concept. This jacket belonged to Göring, who was present at Second World War that is related to the concept of war. <laughs> this is just an example. I made this for the Swedish Army Museum. <laughs> more in the sphere of... But they process the, the, the coat of Göring? Sorry? Do they process the coat of Göring? No, not they. Oh. But this, is, this one is picked from Europeana. Oh. Somebody has this coat. I don't think they do. Was it a to Swedish? Oh. I don't know. Well, we have a, a lot of issues. Uh, well, you see, I've spoken about most of this. We have problems with presenting general content. And general content is agents, events, concepts, and such, such stuff that you can find in books. Uh, the different institutions, the museums and other content providers, have very different uh, uh, technical development level. So they are, uh, some of them just fix their way of providing data to us and others we have to work with for years uh, until they finally can get up with the information. Um, it's hard to, to, to explain to people how digital information works, uh, both in our own institution and, and uh, in others. And uh, uh, the authority files I talked about earlier and, uh, and we were trying to explain what we are doing to a lot of partners. It's hard to, to tell them what we are doing. Um, well, I'll jump the future part, I think. This is hard, I think I have. Yeah, it's like this. Great. Well, I think this is the last slide, actually. And uh, I th this is this is two or three years old, but I think it's still uh, very valid. Uh, but the first one is about standardization. It's very hard to uh, to link data to each other to, to each other's uh, databases if you don't have a common way of expressing the information or, or the metadata of the, the information. Uh, we have a problem with researchers that normally work <coughs> with books, but I think we are giving them the data and saying, yes, this you can do whatever you like with, but they are not familiar with this way of working. Super problem. Um, everything, all their information and results that are uh, uh, that are made from this must be digitally distributed. Uh, of course, everyone that is growing up today are, of course, digital in their mind. And uh, as institutions, we must maintain this academic academical credibility, uh, which is a bit hard because, you know, when when uh, when you have these aggregates of information, we actually have several layers of information. We have a museum in the bottom and then we have our aggregation layer and above this we have an application and maybe it's that application is delivering information to another one. And if I'm buying say a, a Volvo, I will, I have no idea where the different components come from but, but I will be mad at Volvo if something doesn't work. So it's always the front that will take the attack. Uh, and somewhere in the background, we have our information done, and uh, it's hard to tell if it's credible or not. We must be more present on the web, and uh, we must continue this activity in different collaboration constellations, uh, like this one, I think. Well, that's it. Thanks. Thank you.